What is up, Trader Gang? Today we're going to be going over why I kind of thought, um, and I, I would say pretty fair confidence, that we were at the top in the semis. Um, and I'll even go into, I, I mean, really my only short was the exact high on these. And I'll go into why that was, also my confidence levels. And I think it's also important to frame some of these questions as far as what, what does that mean when I think a big picture top? Does that mean these are never going to highs ever again? A lot of people were asking the question, do I think this could be a healthy versus unhealthy pullback? What do I want to see in terms of consolidation and everything else? Uh, what do I want to see for these to make a leg higher and, and all that other stuff? So a lot of good sub questions that I will cover as well. And one thing I would ask of you all, a friend of mine recommended, because generally I find Thinkorswim to be amazing 95% of the time, but then sometimes it's just like incredibly annoying as far as referencing back to certain dates. You can't do um, some of like the multiple tabs as easily. So I was recommended TradingView. Um, I downloaded TradingView and I was fooling around with it, but it seems like it has a little bit of a learning curve and like some of the pros of TradingView are kind of you know, cons of Thinkorswim, but some of the pros of Thinkorswim are cons of TradingView. So just curious if you guys use that and if I should just deal with the learning curve. Um, because for those that are close fans of my videos, I've spent quite some time bobbling around like an idiot. And there was the famous, there was one famous video where I got my cursor stuck into the wrong thing. And then I was just bobbling for like a solid four minutes to the laughter of everyone and frustration of myself. But anywho, I digress. Okay, so let's dive into it. And so there were a lot of good responses to this. And so really, I think it's worth framing this whole conversation by starting with the NVIDIA weekly chart. And what happened was back in May of 22, what we got was that pivotal earnings call where NVIDIA just ended up guiding to the moon on just AI chip demand. And that's when everyone was like, holy shit, AI is real. This movement is real. And that's pretty much what saved the queues. Um, if, if we had to point to one moment that led to the queues um, going to highs and sentiment changing, given the higher rates, it was definitely AI. Like AI is the theme that has carried this market. And so that was the big Pivotal, pivotal change. And the way I look at it is essentially NVIDIA, and, and keep in mind this is split adjusted now, right? These prices, um, what was it, a factor of 10 maybe we, we had? I don't, I, don't, I don't recall anymore. But anywho, we started this move at about 30 and we ended up going to 50. So I almost view this as the first leg. 30 to 50 is the first big picture leg. And keep in mind, shortly thereafter, we got stuff like Avago, aka Broadcom. Like Broadcom made a super sick capitulatory quick move. And even for stuff like Broadcom, I consider this to be the first leg. And so hopping back to NVIDIA, probably this is this is probably the strongest I point I want to make as far as why I thought this could be a big picture top and not just a kind of more mild pullback. And so essentially it's because of how many legs up this has made, how much these legs were accelerating. And um, in general, the more legs you get, the better something gets. And so, right, I got, you know, there's, there's some dude out there and probably many people think that I have some magical ability to call the top. Like I'm, I'm never, sure what the top is going to be. And I would say this top wasn't so great. Like SMCI, I probably had 90% confidence um, when SMCI peaked at like the 1100 or whatever. My my confidence, which I'll get into, was, was much lower on this NVIDIA top. Um, but if it did crack, my confidence that it was going to be very, very meaningful of a pullback was, was pretty high. And so part of that is because, okay, this is leg one. We go 20 points. We then consolidate. Beautiful breakout um, on earnings and everything else during this time. I think the earnings might have been somewhere in there. Again, it's kind of hard just with, with the split adjusted versus, versus my memory. Um, we make another leg where we go almost 50 points. And so, again, these are weekly charts or weekly bars. And so this first 20-point move, it was so many weeks across where people are like, oh, my God, AI is such a big deal. Blow out all, all the semis. It's growth, growth, growth to the moon. Then we get this other wave, and now we go almost 50 points over a, a bunch of weeks, but it's definitely much faster and bigger than, than the first move. 
We have a decent pullback, right? This isn't nothing. It's a decent pullback. We reclaim. And so when we talk about healthy versus unhealthy, which I'll get into much deeper, but for the most part, like this, this held this moving average on, on the weekly chart. It was kind of just one big down bar. Then just as quickly, we we retrace that. And so the big thing I'm going to emphasize at times is just how dynamic charts are, right? Like after this bar, I would say, oh boy, this looks like dog shit. <laughs> but the thing is, is dog shit one week later is like, oh my God, we retraced that really well. So that's why like having my opinion on things, like my, my opinion is always changing. Like, like, like literally next week or in a month or in two months, I can say, oh my God, these semis are holding up really, really well now. I think we might break out and I'm going to get more to that. But anywho, we had a decent pullback here. We reclaim very strongly. We break out again. And now even faster do we go almost another 50 points. And that makes it the third leg. And so now the other thing, right, is along with NVIDIA, which wasn't so, so crazy, we saw some stuff just go totally ape shit. Like this arm breakout was totally ape shit. That was wild. Insane, insane volume. And again, as far as health, healthy pullbacks, man, this, this retraced almost a hundred percent of, of the pullback. So when this was breaking out later, like I did not want to buy this breakout. In fact, I was even short biased on this because this pulled back so, 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 so far. So for us to break out, we're already reclaiming so much ground. This is not what a healthy stock does. So even though this reclaim was was very impressive. Like, I don't want to buy this. There's going to be way better charts for me to buy. Like NVIDIA, for example, I would way rather buy NVIDIA than this. And no surprise, NVIDIA ended up working way better. And so even this Avago, this Avago made a bunch of legs as well. And so all throughout this, what's happening is like we're seeing some really incredible moves. Micron, which isn't even that AI focused and hasn't participated in much, Micron makes this beautiful 40 point leg, pulls back and then retraces. But then we go almost a, um, almost another 40 points, just super, super quick. That is a pretty impressive move. Like Micron did not have earnings on that leg. So keep in mind, Micron moved 20%. So all of these being the third leg is huge. All of these now moving generally faster is is very interesting to me arm having already had one of like the biggest mega capitulations makes me think this is just generally going to fail to some degree and so all of these were, were pretty interesting and even avago now let's go let's go to the daily chart to get more nuanced so generally what happens with these cycles is the more legs you get like we get it. We get it. Like everyone is AI hype, like huge CapEx from, from the big stocks. But again, we're talking about companies that are billions and billions and billions of dollars large, right? In the case of NVIDIA, we're talking trillions of dollars. So these stocks in market cap world are just eating up so much market cap during this. Like the, the overall market of semiconductors and how much these were going up in market cap is is was nearly unfathomable. That doesn't mean that can't sustain, but like that's a huge amount of money that needs to sustain that. And so even this 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 Broadcom or whatever, okay, like decent breakout, sure, whatever. And we have our earnings and we we kind of close red. Then we just have these big gaps. And so I don't want to short front side on these, but here's what happened. So this was a pretty big move. Micron was making a pretty big move. Then NVIDIA, so NVIDIA got to the point where like every day we were just up multiple percent, up multiple percent. And this is all on no news. And this NVIDIA on 6-18, this was up like 4% on kind of nothing. And so then this was going, yeah, I think I do remember this correctly. So this was, let me check these dates actually real quick. June, so 6-18, got it. Um, oh, that's why I had the date. Oh no, uh-oh guys, we've got the we've, we've got the, uh, the cursor of doom here. Exactly what I was talking about. Let me see if I can undo myself, there we go. So, okay, I remember this so specifically and this, that's why I was checking the dates. So we had off Juneteenth this year and I ended up going to dinner with one of my trader buddies and we were at, at a sushi restaurant and NVIDIA trades, I think there's what, like a German ADR or something. And he said, 
he said, oh my God, NVIDIA is up another like four or 5% or something in, in Germany. And I'm like, what? Like, no way, dude. Like, like, okay, I'm beginning my short. And so on, on interactive brokers, I was able to short overnight at like, like 142 and 143. And again, why? Because we made a 4% move on nothing. We made another 4% move. My, my confidence level that this was going to be the top wasn't that, 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 that high, but we were definitely getting there. So I wanted to leave room that maybe this could have one more day um, because particularly in NVIDIA, the volume wasn't impressing me. So I wanted to leave room for this to like gap 143 or something. Like in an ideal world, this would have gapped to 143. Maybe we get like a nice six, seven point gap. Then off the open, we do a really sharp drive into 150, then we fail. That would have been A++++ for me. So so really, and this, this is true to God, my first short in the semis was overnight at 142, 143-ish. And so then what's so interesting is this, the pre-market on 6-20, all the semis were up a good chunk. And what ended up happening though, and, and my memory might be a little bit foggy on this, but what ended up happening was this Micron was up like maybe 160, 160-ish, and then into the open uh, in the pre-market, it started to really fade. This AVGO into, into the open started to really fade. And that was like, by the time the market opened, the only stock that was still meaningfully up was NVIDIA. And that's when I'm like, that pre-market action was probably a big tell. And so then right off the open, this MU cracked very hard. So now this is where we're going to go into the, the intradays a little bit. So 6-20. And again, this is where I get stuck bobbling. Like, I don't know if there's some faster way for me to do, oops for me to do this. Um, but this is kind of the problem I'm hoping to solve with trading view. Um, cause then I just got to waste everyone's time and fumble. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> this is so important. Actually, let's see, was I right on the pre-market? Um, oh, so, so this micron wasn't even gapping up at all. And that was interesting. I think it was the Avigo. Let me see. Did the Avigo fade? Yeah. So Avigo was up at 183 and starts fading into the open. Then off the open, Avigo and micron just get crushed. Like this is a very significant down move in micron. Like that is no joke. This stock goes from 158 to 150 within 15 minutes. So Nvidia holds up pretty damn well where I'm thinking, okay, like maybe Nvidia doesn't really crack. But then once Nvidia cracks these initial lows after holding up so well, this is kind of like stage one of like, oh my God, this might be, might be game on. And we kind of like reclaim. So, okay, then, then you kind of have your doubts. Once this rolls though, and meanwhile, it's not just this one. MU is, MU never really bounces. Like MU is weak as shit. Avigo is also fairly weak and rolling, but this this micron was was definitely I would say the the big tell. Like it's very hard to imagine Nvidia holding up so well when micron is just getting absolutely smoked. And so long story short, we, we all know the rest. These end up really really cracking. And so if I had to put odds on everything, like I really like. So here are the cons. Let's let's go through that. Like so the pros are of course three legs and the speed of it and then the fact that we're at like a 3 trillion dollar company and we're just up 4% on no news then up another 4%. I would say the biggest con for me is kind of one the volume was very lackluster in this and number 2 just like the intraday was initially pretty resilient even though the others were cracking. When I again like like in my ideal world I would have loved like a 142 143 gap opening drive to 150, then fail hard. We didn't get that. But once this starts cracking hard, like this is, when this retraces, this actually ends up being an outside bar, which is pretty incredible given that gap up. Once this has an outside bar and closes so damn weak, and like that, that's like pretty much a death candle to me. Like we've broken prior bar lows now. We have this huge death candle. All this volume's way out of the money. Stuff like Micron, is looking like total shit. Stuff like AVGO, not looking awful, but what I wanted to see in AVGO is this to break prior bar lows. And by the way, so I know a lot of this might seem like hindsight, but I did a um, I did a Clover trading seminar on just I was just talking on at one of their 
virtually at one of their meetings just just for fun. And I don't remember when it was. I think the, I think the seminar I did was probably in like July 9th or 10th or something. And I and I spoke pretty confidently about all these factors and a lot of that stuff, you know, right? Then a lot of the stuff ended up getting crushed. Um but even in the moment, right? It was like if this breaks prior bar lows, this this AVGO, right? You know, big up move, you know, holding prior bar low, prior bar low, blah 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 blah. Once we break this um, 178 ish, that for me is backside and look how well that worked on prior bar highs. And so like, like I never know what's going to happen, but the more things we have in, in my favor, the more confident I am. So these were not actually some a plus setup. Like I would say these were like an a minus, I would say my confidence level was only like a 60%, but because it's the third leg and just how aggressively these had been, I felt like big picture, the reward could be really big, not just initially, but even for like a second leg. And so when this melts like that, that's so game over. And it, a lot of it again is just that tell from that first, that first death bar. And like, again, like depending your time frame, like there's going to be traders out there where your whole move is just to short intraday and catch this move intraday. There's going to be some swing traders where you're going to short and catch this move into this and then, you know, cover into the weakness, or maybe you cover prior bar highs on the daily. All of that is fine. There's then going to be swing traders out there that are really big picture and they're holding a core through all this. And once, so here's the thing is on my, on my Patreon, a lot of times we've studied kind of this, this lower high after things crack. And when this has this death candle and we pull back and pierce that MA, when stuff like this, this MU looks like, you know, dog shit and is way off highs. And when AVGO looks like dog shit, that's a pretty steep pullback. So in the re realm of healthy versus unhealthy, I mean, I would say this is more than a 50% pullback of, of this overall leg. It's pretty damn steep. That makes, like the deeper this pullback is, the more interested I am in shorting that kind of retracement high. And so I think for the swing traders, like this is the type of thing where I might want a fair amount of size, you know, once this turns backside, maybe you want a little front side, a fair amount backside, you cover some into this and that's kind of where you reload. And so even, and this was right around the time I started to, um, you know, just stop trading to focus on, on Magnum Opus, but like this, this is such a great, like, even though it, like it makes you question yourself, <laughs> you know? And, but, but the difference is the beauty of this is if you're trying to catch a big picture move, now your stop is so defined, right? You can risk a couple points against that and you have such a defined stop and like, the, look, I'm not saying it's like 90% odds here, but I would, I would argue that it's probably like, I would still give it probably 40%, 40, 50% chance that, 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 that high holds, which doesn't sound that great, but the asymmetry is enormous, right? Like you're risking four points and look how far this is pulled back, right? Depending on your system to capture some of this stuff. And it's, it's. It's so often that once things kind of make that, that what I would call that unhealthy pullback, right? Like this, this is pretty damn steep and it breaks that moving average. Like that's when this is higher probability than you might otherwise think. And again, the point I want to make is it's always probabilistic. There could be some huge upgrade that comes out, right? On maybe July 11th, some huge, amazing upgrade comes out from, from some ax in the name and it breaks the highs. Okay, that's fine. Like, that's why this is like a risky game. You know, like there's always, if I was ever certain of anything, I would just pour my whole account into it and I would have a billion dollars by now. Like these are mega liquid, right? Let alone the amount you could just sell an options premium and then roll it into puts, right? You would have infinite money if you ever had very, even above 90% confidence. Like my 90% confidence is very, very rare. And it's for stuff like SMCI that you maybe get once every five years or something. Anywho. So a lot of those things made me think that this was going to be a big picture top. And then I would say where it really confirms is once, I think this was on the ASML potentially. I, I'll confirm it. Let's see. Um, 7-17, whoops. No, that wasn't until 7 dash. Oh, it was 7-17. Yeah, I'm right. And so ASML, here's what happens, guys, is like when you get this feedback loop that leads to up, 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 it leads to expectations being so sky high, right? Like, like let's take Micron. Micron didn't have 
earnings yet. When we went from 130 to 160, then things cracked. So for those that follow closely on Twitter, I, I sold a huge amount of calls because implied volatility was so insanely high. But now think about it, right? Like this stock is up so so much <laughs> just in between earnings reports that makes the burden of of proof so high on this report for it to then blow out a high like that um and so then what i would also say is this pattern is definitely i would consider this stuff full broken once this kind of at least for micron once this gets broken which the asml crushed it like asml was the probably the nail in the coffin for this pattern. And so even AVGO, once that gaps down and we break this, that's where you can even potentially short this range against that, that lower, uh, lower high. Because generally, right, when a top is in, what I expect is this is going to be the, uh, the high, this is going to be the low, this is going to be the uh, lower high, then you generally make a lower low. So I don't, I have no clue what's going to happen here, right? Maybe we make another higher low, lower low. I don't know. But, and that's the thing is we don't need to know. Like so many people were asking me uh, like, oh, do you think this is a healthy distribution for another leg higher? Who, who the fuck knows? Who cares even, right? Like I don't need to make that decision now. Like, like l let me give an analogy. So many times when you're trading some small cap, like there's a lot of stocks that I would overnight as part of a strategy and, and, and my playbook. Maybe it would, it's a hot IPO. Maybe it's a hot low float. Maybe it's a day one news uh, earnings type thing. There's a lot of things I would, I would overnight for momentum. And so often people would ask me at like, you know, 1 p.m. or noon or something or 2.30, hey, are you thinking of overnighting this? And there's only one right answer. Dude, like why waste brain cells trying to figure out that answer when I have way less information than I'm going to have in the future, right? Like I want to start thinking like it's, it's not bad to come up with a, with a framework of like, Hey, what, what variables might I consider on the over overnight? Like that's more valid, but like, I'm not going to decide if I'm going to overnight a stock at, at 1 PM. Like, Anything can happen between 1 and 4 p.m. The stock could capitulate 50 points higher. The stock could crack 50% lower. There could be an offering. There could be news. So it's like, do I think this could set up for a, a leg higher? Like, dude, like literally anything can happen. Like, I mean, literally any of these stocks can be at, at all-time highs next week. It's a probabilistic game. But I'm going to try and figure out and change my mind as the pattern changes. Right now, the pattern is dog shit. Right now, everything... You know, right now that the, it's right now that was a capitulatory third leg top. The we're making lower highs and lower lows, so the trend is down. So when that changes, I'll I'll just see where we're at. And so the other example I'd want to give is like with with BTC, right? So so many people are like debating in here. Oh my God, is this just going to be kind of the fake out for for the the later breakout at seventy five hundred? And it's like. I don't need to make that decision. And like, even in here, people are asking me like, oh my God, what's your, what's your plan for the breakout? How are you positioning for the breakout? And it's like, I don't need to make that decision in here. I can see how this sets up against the breakout. Like why, why, why wed yourself psychologically to a outcome before you have all the information? It's like, it's, it's like asking in poker, Hey man, how, how, how many chips do you think you're going to end up putting in this hand? It's like, how the hell can I know that? I don't know all the cards on the table. I don't know how everyone's betting. And and whatever answer I give you is going to change as I get more information. Um, so when it's like, you know, I would have said like, look, like in general, this Bitcoin price action was, was pretty damn shitty. What happened? The whole Trump thing, we have this massive gap. And now the price structure, like this has totally changed. Now we're setting up bullishly again because of this, right? But the thing that people need to realize is like, in trading and like really in anything, whether it's politics, whether it's science and literature and nutrition or whatever, like people should have the ability to change on the dime without ridicule as the information changes, right? Because this stuff is dynamic. Science is dynamic. Politics are dynamic. You know, you can, you can support someone one second and then as more information comes out you can say hey that's not someone i align with and that's okay we shouldn't ridicule that we can we can say look i'm short biased and then boom that can change and then we can be neutral or long biased so the, my, my, my point is with all this like do i know what's going to happen to nvidia no not at all but until this pattern 
structure changes of, of lower highs and lower lows. Um, this, I don't want to think about, oh my God, is this capitulation for like, who knows? You know, and again, the thing is, is like, like news can change anything. Like the world is just so dynamic. Macro news can change. The CPI can change this. Company specific news. What if Facebook or some of the mega caps say, oh my God, we're cutting CapEx. Like anything can change my views within two seconds. Um, so they're only valuable in, in the moment. Um, minus just for learning purposes, which is why I do this, right? And that's also why I don't do any of the live stuff because there's just no way to learn. Like, you know, anybody that's ever wanted live stuff, it's like, dude, you're just trying to piggyback me. You're not trying to put in the work and learn the concepts, which I'm just freely putting out there. Um, so the other question as part of this is, is that I want to dive deeper now is, is what does a healthy pullback look like? And I would say, first of all, it's like such a subjective question. Like what, what the hell does healthy versus unhealthy even mean? Like, like for starters, like, like, like charts are inanimate objects. Like I, I try not to, what's the word, a morphopromise or whatever the word is where you, you give, you give human characteristics to something that's inanimate. Like, I don't want to say, oh my God, like the market is, is so against me or the market hates me or, or this stock is healthy or this, this is a happy chart. Like stocks and charts and everything, there's no emotions, right? It's just, it's just human transactions being displayed in chart form. Um, so so like, I think the better wording is like, what, what is maybe like a more bullish versus bearish price action uh, on a pullback? And so, so let's try and figure that out. So like, I don't personally believe in Fibonacci's and I, I have a video on this for, for Magnum Opus coming out, but like, I, I think Fibonacci's are, are bullshit. Like it's just price fitting bullshit numbers that, that it's like, what I do think is valuable though is just for the sense of having a framework in a system, we can we can say that a 50% retracement is the base case, right? So if something retraces 0%, a 0% retracement is super, super strong. So let's go back to this weekly chart of NVIDIA. This NVIDIA makes a leg pretty much from 30 to 50. We hold up pretty damn well. This consolidation is longer and healthier, you know, if we want to use that word because it's, it's shallower than up here which is a shorter time of consolidation, and we've got a steeper pullback. Now, if we look at this third leg, this pullback is so much steeper than that prior one and infinitely steeper than this other one. So I would argue A is better than B is better than C. Um, so the percent, right? And so now let's take Micron, because <laughs> Micron's actually funny, um, Right, I would argue this last leg was roughly from like 130 to 160. So it, it went 30 points. This was a 100% pullback. We retraced 100% of that move. Now we're another 30 points lower. So I would argue this, this is pulled back 200%. So even if this micron starts to show strength, in no way would I really want to buy this at highs because this, this is the weakest of them, right? Unless that price action really changes. Again, my view can change as the pattern changes. But unless something changes, like this is the weakest one. Now, if I take this Abigo, you know, this has been pretty much a 100% retracement of that leg. That's that's not healthy. What I would have wanted to see is this to hold the moving average, then like kind of reclaim here, hold the moving average, start to tighten up. You want to know who does good on this stuff? Like even though we've learned totally independent, like Kuala Magi has really great videos on like the price action he sees. They're all free. It's all out there in the public. A lot of the charts that he views as good coiling, I, I would agree with. And so once that moving average is broken, we're consolidating down here, we're breaking down down there. That's no good either. 100% retracement at this point. NVIDIA, we're not quite at a 100% retracement of this move. We, we'd have to lose probably another five more points, six points, but that's not good, you know, right? This is anything below, like this gap killed it, then that breakdown killed it. So it's, Again, this stuff can change, but right now I don't view this as healthy as all at all. I view all of this as confirming my view that that this this was a big picture top. And again, that's part of the issue is like you can only be so detailed um, on Twitter when when you're using limited characters and limited attention spans. Like, what does big picture mean? I don't really know, it, actually, to be honest. But like when I use big picture in this case. Um, and I'm sure I've used it in meaning many different things before. So it's, 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 it's not, it's, I'm not trying to be evasive. I just think generally humans use kind of vague 
language. But I, I would say I felt that this could be like a, a like kind of like not a short term top within covering days, but more medium where at least covering weeks and months, given given such a leg like that. And like, do I think this will be the all time high in NVIDIA? I mean, just based on the fact of how much stocks go up and, and the likelihood that this stays relevant in the next decade. Um, like, I mean, I have I have no view like it, it could easily go to highs by the end of the year. Um, it could even go to highs next month. Um, so big picture just means like, look, I really think this has a meaningful pullback beyond a couple days, I guess. Um, but again, not all time highs. Who the hell knows? I have no clue. Um, so at the end of the day, it's it's really like the point I want to make is we're using a lot of these indicators to come up with situations where the odds are more in our favor. I actually didn't think this NVIDIA was the most amazing high confidence, high probability setup, but like I also think it's not totally random that the only day I shorted this was the, you know, the top, like, like, or let me, let me rephrase that. The first day that I shorted this was the top. And, and that's, that doesn't mean that I'm always right. But like, I think if you're someone that's worked with me and, and everything else, you, you know that my timing is pretty good, right? Obviously I take losses, everything else. I took a big loss in SMCI before I made it back and then some, um, so yeah, no one's no one's perfect. No one can can do that, but it's just stacking the odds. And the and the thing to keep in mind is a lot of the time if the play's not there, like keep in mind for all intents and purposes, nothing stopped Nvidia from from topping here or topping in here. If Nvidia topped anywhere near here, I would have just missed it. I would have had literally no position. In fact, if Nvidia, like there's no reason why Nvidia couldn't have topped on this day or any of these. And I probably would have had literally zero position. And you know what? That's okay. And so what I would say is like the reality is so many times, like I, I really just don't have a position, you know, and like it's like the beauty is much like in poker where you can just wait until like it's even better than poker because you, you don't have any vig to play, right? I'm never small blind. I'm never paying any ante or big blind or whatever. So I can just, I can just sit around, especially me. Like I'm, I'm not trading that, that much, right? Like I can definitely sit around way more than if I was like 21 and, 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 you know, hunting sewer rats for food. Um, that allows me to only play the really, really good, um, you know, pocket pairs or the aces. And what that means though, is I'm folding 9,000 hands, right? There's a zillion tickers every single day. Like, um, you know, the one dude was asking about crowd. And so like, you know, let's touch on this for a second. So this had, I think it was this day, the big gap. We were a little weak into that, but I don't, whatever. I think it's obviously the big gap on the huge volume. Um, and so like, this is breaking news. Like I have no interest generally buying day one breaking news unless there was some epic intraday capitulation. Um, we closed week this day. It, I would have potentially been watching an intraday if we closed week and had another really like third big down day or even ideally a fourth. We have these consolidation bars. So all this consolidation is reset. So generally I have no interest in being long while we're just chilling here. Then what happens is we have another, you know, again, like some, some people might be like, oh my God, Lance, this news that Delta is suing and, and wants, wants um, to recuperate some of the losses. Like, oh, that's so obvious. That's not fresh news. It's not really my place to decide what's, what's, what's fresh news or not. Like I, it's fairly binary to me, right? That was clearly news moving the stock. It was immediate after hours. We we're gapping down huge. Like that news is, is news to someone, right? So then this to me kind of just resets everything. I did a post, I think Mo Moist Mango kind of made me do not, not that he made me do, but I did a post because of, that, um, because of him on like, you know, resetting that counter. A lot of times when there's fresh news, um, especially after we've been consolidating down here, like this is, this is just like, this is a total no play for me. Um, you know, could we bounce from here? Yeah. And like, here's the thing, like, it, like people think that like, if this bounces from here, I, 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 I literally do not care one bit. It wasn't in my playbook. Like, like again, 90 nine percent of the time i i have zero edge like uh, someone might have edge someone might say oh my god i'm so confident all my indicators like tell me today was the, the the bottom okay you know good for you like i do well by just sticking to my playbook 
Um, if other people have different data and different edges and different skull sets, like that's the beauty of, of markets. And I think that's important for people to internalize, right? Like I'm not playing every single ticker. I'm only playing the stuff that goes right in my wheelhouse with all the really good nuances. And then even in stuff like the NVIDIA, I do think I had some decent predictive ability just by the nature of, look, I only shorted, you know, the first day I shorted was, was, was the top, but even here was I not super, super confident. I felt like 142 is definitely going to be good at some point. Maybe I'll be out of the money front side, um, that day and it's going to get even better for me. But, but we were generally, I would say generally I'm timing stuff. Most, most of the time I'm involved, it's, it's usually the, the top or the bottom, or at least we're getting close. I, I, I would say probably maybe 40 to 50%, depending on the, how good the pattern is, it's the top or the bottom. Maybe 40%, it's, it's a day away and I'm smaller sized. You know, and the other thing, and that's the beauty of exponential bet sizing, right? Is like, I don't mind if, if I short 142s and we go 150 or 155, I'm trading in a way where my risk is managed in that like, if then we gap to 170, like I am going to make a zillion dollars if this went to 170 in two days, you know? So it's, the other thing is like, if you're experienced, you're, you're okay with certain levels of, of losses, you know, scrapes on the front side, you're, you're okay with small levels of drawdown. Then once it turns or once it goes backside, you just go absolutely ape shit. And that, that's how you like, make a year in NVIDIA or you crush a GME or whatever else. Um, so anywho, I think this video went much longer than I thought, but hopefully this was useful and helps you all out. And thank you all so much. Let me know of any questions and enjoy.